Thanks, Angela. Uh, it's so wonderful to see you all here this afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Um, so as Angela said, uh, this uh, presentation, this workshop we're about to dive into will be recorded. So no need to worry about remembering everything uh, or anything like that, because we'll be sending the recording to you and the slide deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we'll go through a few logistical details before we um, get into the meat of things. All right, so um, I just realized that I pulled up the wrong presentation. <laughs> so give me one second and I will pull up the correct one. Sorry about that folks. There we go. All right, so this is not LinkedIn for job search level one. This is LinkedIn for job search level two. <laughs> uh, and I will explain the difference between those two things in just a moment. But if this is not what you had intended to, um, to attend today, then you know. All right, so uh, again, the session's being recorded. Now, we've learned over the past several years of doing these workshops over Zoom that it works much better if we, everybody else besides me stays muted for the whole workshop. So we're going to ask that you stay muted and you can put any questions or comments that you have into the chat window. I will be monitoring the chat window the whole time and I will respond to questions uh, as appropriate based on their relevance to what we're talking about. And then there will also be a few designated Q&A breaks where I will go through and make sure that I've hit everyone's questions. Uh, finally, uh, you and I are now uh, professional acquaintances, so please do connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, I am more than happy to answer any questions that uh, don't get answered or that pop up afterwards. I'm also happy to review profiles or provide any other guidance that you feel I might be able to help with. If you are wondering how on earth do I connect with someone on LinkedIn, then you are in exactly the right place because we are going to be going over that today. A little bit about me. Why am I up here uh, giving a workshop on LinkedIn for job search? So first of all, I have not nor have I ever been directly connected to LinkedIn in any way. I've never worked for them. Um, I guess I've known a few people that have worked for them, but that's about it. I just have used LinkedIn pretty much since they got started. I've used them to build my own professional network, and I've used them also to... Um, build my own teams when I've been in jobs. And uh, it's helped me quite a bit. So who am I? What is my day job when I'm not leading LinkedIn workshops? I'm uh, a nonprofit professional. I, right now I'm working at a nonprofit that provides interest-free loans to members of the Northern California community for various purposes. Uh, I also spent about 15 years in the um, marketing and startup worlds, uh, but I enjoy nonprofit much, much more. Uh, speaking of startup and tech, um, the pandemic hit me hard as it hit many of us hard. Uh, and the, we all know the job market is very tough right now. And I was laid off three times between June 2020 and September 2022. Um, so I've had to be out there searching for a new job very often over the past several years in some pretty interesting situations. And um, my LinkedIn network was what showed up for me, honestly. Uh, it, it gave me the connections and the capability to understand what options I had and the people that I was connected with, I was able to activate them and, um, and get more opportunities than I would have otherwise. And as I look through, back over my you know, 16 or 17 year career at this point, I realized that every job that I've had, I've gotten through networking of some sort. Some of it LinkedIn networking, some of it other types of networking. But when it all comes down to it, LinkedIn is just another way to create connections between people, to network. 
Uh, so um, that's my background, and that's why that's you know a lot a lot of the reason why I think that these workshops can be so valuable for people. But we're really not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about you and get your questions answered and help you learn. So. What I'd really love to know before we, we get started on the main presentation is why are you here? What is it that you're hoping to learn today? What are your goals that we can maybe help you work towards? Um, if you're um, comfortable sharing, I'd love for you to put that into the chat right now. And that will help me also tailor the presentation and what we talk about today to make sure it's as valuable as possible for as many of you as possible. So I'll just be quiet for a minute right now uh, to give you a chance to type. Okay, I'm going to keep going, but please do if you're still typing. Yeah, please keep typing and put it in. I will definitely be looking at the chat window to see what people's goals are uh, and what you're hoping to learn. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, selling yourself is hard. Uh, we, we often uh, are become very good at underselling ourselves at, at kind of playing down our strengths uh, and um, you wanna do the opposite. Um, so we'll talk about that. Um, we'll talk about that a lot in session three actually, but I'll, I'll walk you through what the workshop series looks like so you get an idea of that. If you have an input, um, if you haven't put in the chat what you're hoping to learn yet, but you still wanna share that, please do. I'm gonna move on now in the interest of time. So this is the whole series. Um, we started this about um, gosh, what is it now? 12 years ago now. Um, and, um, very quickly realized that it was more than one session long. <laughs> uh, and so we ended up breaking it up into three sessions, a whole series, uh, and, and in order to be able to dive deep enough, um, to really, um, help people learn what they needed to know. So um, we do a different level each month and we cycle through it over the course of the year. So last month in January, we did level one and that is really a very basic, like, I don't really know much about LinkedIn. How do I get started? We walked through creating an account. We walked through um, a tour of the LinkedIn interface. And then we spent the bulk of our time talking about how to create an amazing, super strong, impressive, LinkedIn profile. Uh, and that recording is on the, the uh, library's YouTube channel if you want to view it now, or you can come back in April to see it again live. Today is level two. I call it level two, not necessarily because I expect you to have come to level one or that I expect that you're in any way more advanced. It's more that it just assumes at least a basic level of knowledge with the LinkedIn interface. You don't have to have a perfect profile yet at all um, in order to get value. In fact, even if you're not even on LinkedIn yet, you can still learn a lot today. Today is about building that network. Once you have your profile, for example, how do you then build a strong network of people and what are ways that you can use to stay engaged with them so that your network stays, stays strong and connected? And then next month in March, we'll do level three. In level three, there, it's sort of a two-parter. In the first part, we talk about how to then leverage that network to find jobs to apply for and to apply for those jobs. So using tools on LinkedIn and then, and then activating your network to help you get more opportunities. 
In the second part of level three, we shift gears a little bit and we, we focus on how you can use LinkedIn to create a really strong professional brand for yourself, a reputation that will result, hopefully, the dream is that the opportunities actually start coming to you. You don't have to go out and look for them because people know, oh, you're an expert at this. You're a good person to go to for this sort of work. Hey, come work with us. That's the idea. And LinkedIn can actually help make that happen for you. So that's what we talk about in level three. All right. Uh, but let's focus on level two today, all about building your network. So the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to building a strong network on LinkedIn is don't expect it to happen overnight. Okay. Um, it takes time and effort to build up a strong network because you think about it this way, right? You might start with just a few people who are who are really good for your network, right? They they're they're people who could really help you towards your goals, right? They're very relevant for you. Well, they're going to be the ones who maybe get you connected to more people and then more people. And after that, it kind of starts snowballing and suddenly you, you start being able to connect with more people. But you, if you go from, you know, five contacts to 500 contacts in just a week or so, that means that your contacts might not be so good quality on LinkedIn, right? You want to be strategic about it. One of the most important things that you want to think about as you're building your network is what are my goals? In fact, this is really a mantra that you need to keep in mind throughout this whole workshop, throughout your time on LinkedIn. What am I trying to accomplish? What am I trying to get to? Right? That should guide how you build your profile. That should guide how you create a strong network. And that should guide how you leverage that network for jobs. Everything should point back up to that goal that you're trying to accomplish. Uh, and and so um, so the people that you that you bring into your network should be relevant for that goal. So um, when you're building your network, it's not just about quantity. And like I said, it's great to have 500 connections, but if they're not relevant for your goal, then they're not good quality. So you need to find that balance of quantity and quality. Anytime you consider whether someone should be in your network, think about whether they're relevant enough, whether they would contribute to the quality of that network for you. All right. In a moment, we're going to go live to LinkedIn. I promise it's not going to be a slide presentation the whole time. Most of the time, we're going to be on LinkedIn. But this is just some basic foundational stuff I want to make sure to communicate to you. So you might, for those of us who are just starting out or who are coming back to LinkedIn after a long break, how do you even, like, who should be in this network? How do you get started, right? So here are a few things, places that you can start when you're thinking about who to add to your network. The first and most obvious are the people you already know in real life from a professional standpoint, right? Um, current and former co-workers, employers and employees, uh, partners, clients, um, really anyone, uh, students, I mean, depending on kind of what field you're in, professors, whatever, again, who are relevant for your goal, right? Um, a lot of people ask about friends and family. So, you know, it's important to keep in mind, um, Tara, thank you for your question about whether I want you to be on screen. It doesn't really matter to me. I love seeing people's faces. You're absolutely welcome. Um, you know, I do miss when these workshops were in person, but it is nice to increase the accessibility by having them on Zoom. So um, you're welcome to be on screen, but if you prefer to be off screen, that's also totally fine. Thank you for asking. All right. So um, in terms of friend, personal personal connections, like friends and family and that sort of thing, that's really a case by case basis, because for some of us, our friends and family might very well be professionally relevant for us. In that case, I would say go for it. Um, for other folks, 
you know, think about it. And, and I would say, be cautious, you know, I'm not going to add my, my grandmother on LinkedIn because she's just in no way relevant for me professionally, but my, my sister, depending on what she does, she might be relevant or my mother, you know, I, I run an, an, a student loan fund to help low-income students get an education. My mother's a teacher. So, you know, there could be relevancy there. Um, But LinkedIn is for your professional purposes. So don't feel pressured to add friends and family as connections if you don't feel it would be helpful for you. All right, the second category of people that you can add to LinkedIn or um, consider adding are people you meet in real life. The folks who you don't know yet, but you meet. Um, For example, at a LinkedIn workshop. Now, why would you add these people who you already know or who you meet in real life? Like, isn't that sort of redundant, right? Like, why add them on a on a social network if you know them already and you're already connected? It's a good question. And um, there's a, there is a very good reason, I think. The reason is because LinkedIn in particular is designed to help you strengthen and stay engaged with these connections, right? It it enables you to create a large network of professional connections and actually maintain a strong enough bond with everyone that they will then show up for you if you need them. And you can't, like, there's, there's no one on earth organized enough to do that without the, 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 the tools and capabilities that a platform like LinkedIn gives you. I'll give you a very small kind of silly example, but it's one that I like to use that I think gets the message across. So let's say I'm at a bus stop waiting for a bus and uh, the woman next to me is eating a delicious looking cupcake. And I, it, cupcakes are a particular passion of mine. So I ask her where she got it. We strike up a conversation, discover a mutual passion for cupcakes, and we start talking. And um, and we, we our buses come, we exchange information and go our separate ways. Well, when I get home, let's say in scenario one, I email her and she emails back and we talk and it's an interesting conversation, but then life gets busy and we, you know, it peters off. Months later, I would, in order to reconnect with her, I would have to, first of all, remember that she existed and that I I knew her. I would have to find the conversation in my email threads. And then I would have to hope that she also remembered who I was and enough about me in order to re-engage. Let's say instead of just emailing her when I got home, I connected with her on LinkedIn. I sent her a message and requested to connect and we became LinkedIn friends and we messaged back and forth. And the same thing happened after a few back and forths, we both got busy. But then a few months later, LinkedIn notified me that she had a work anniversary. And then a little bit after that, she saw a post that I posted um, sharing an, an, an article. Right. So that and and then I say, oh wait, who's this one? I don't remember her. I click in her profile. Oh yeah, the cupcake person, right? So LinkedIn provides the nudges, the foundation that enables you to keep those connections there and to keep them strong, and it does it for you. So that's why, whenever I'm at a conference, whenever I meet new people, and I tell this to my teams too you go back to your hotel room or you go back to your office and you connect with people on LinkedIn. And that's just the first step in ensuring that that connection will be there to serve you later. So anyway, people you meet in real life. Finally, and this is where we'll go and have some fun on LinkedIn, it's people with whom you have something in common that point of commonality, that that not only makes them relevant for your professional goals, but it also gives you kind of an in. We call it a hook, right? It's Or a, a trigger, really. It's something that um, makes you relevant to them, a shared alma mater or a place where you worked or a shared interest. And LinkedIn is rife with all of these because of the LinkedIn profiles. And so you can reach out to someone and you can request to connect with them on the basis of that. 
some points of commonality are better than others. For example, a shared connection is probably one of the best ones. We'll go through all that in a moment. So these are the these are the types of folks that I would say um, are good to connect with. All right, let's go to LinkedIn. So I'm going to go to LinkedIn. And uh, for those of you who aren't super familiar with LinkedIn, this is my homepage. Um, and I am going to uh, just filter out all the noise. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do a search for people. I've I've exhausted all the people I know in real life and all the people I've recently met, and I'm looking for more people to add to my network. And so I'm going to do a search, and I'm just going to it's gonna, as simple as this search bar up here. I'm going to type cupcakes, because I want more people who are interested in cupcakes or who are relevant. I have a, I'm trying to pivot into cupcakes. All right. So you notice that it's sort of, it, it gave me some posts, um, but these, these uh, little bubbles at the top allow me to filter my search by the type of results I'm going to get. I want people. Okay. Because I'm looking for people. All right. So here are a bunch of people relevant to the word cupcakes. Now I can do some more filters too, like locations, connections. All right, so this is the one I wanna highlight. When you're doing a search like this, right? If you go home and you say, I'm gonna do what Sherry did, this is the first filter you should try, right? Click on connections and click on second, okay? The first degree connections are people you're already connected with. Don't bother with that one. Click second degree connections. These are friends of friends. Right, let's click show results. All right, why is that helpful? Because let's say that I am um, trying to get into cupcakes. I would love, love, love to be introduced to Johnny Earl, the CEO at Johnny Cupcakes. How do I get to him? Well, we have three mutual connections, okay? So I could, I'm going to go, I mean, regardless, I'm going to go to Johnny's profile. I'm going to learn all about him, right? But I'm also going to see who do we know in common. I'm going to choose the person that I know best. I'm going to reach out to Dave and I'm going to ask Dave, who is one of my connections, if he'll introduce me to Johnny, right? Because there's no better introduction you can get to someone than by being introduced by a mutual connection, right? Because the, the, it's like they're vouching for you. It's a much warmer, stronger. And so Johnny will be much more likely to respond to me and engage if the intro is made by someone he already knows. So that's always my first stop. When I identify someone I wanna get connected to, I see if there's a way I can get introduced. Let's say, however, that I don't, have a way. Maybe I don't feel comfortable reaching out to any of our mutual connections. That could very likely happen, especially if you are not as close to some of your LinkedIn connections. So I'm going to go to Johnny's profile. Um, and I'm going to do my, um, I'm going to do my homework, right? Sorry, I have another screen here. I forgot to say that at the beginning. So that's why I'm looking to the side. Um, I'm going to do my homework. I'm going to read through Johnny's profile in detail. I'm going to look at, at his about section. I'm going to look at his experience. Okay. I'm going to look at his volunteering initiatives. He's into animal welfare and, and the ACLU. I'm going to look at who's recommended him. I'm going to look at his publications. He's a very impressive dude. All right. Um, and then I'm also going to go up and I'm going to look at his activity right? I'm going to look at what he's been up to, okay? Because I need to know everything about him. Maybe, first of all, I'll start responding to some of his activity so I, I get on his radar, okay? This looks like it's not actually, yeah. <laughs> 
it's actually a food themed t-shirt brand. See, and if I did my homework, I would know that. Um, And then I would I would go back up and I would I would say, okay, where are the points of commonality between me and Johnny? All right. And I would identify them. I'd make a list, right? What are the points of commonality? Well, we both are super passionate about animal welfare. Um, he's in Boston. I grew up in the Boston area. Uh, what else? Um, he, he he's uh yeah, there may not be a whole lot more. Right. So you got to work with what you have. And then if if again, if I can't get introduced, I would reach out to Johnny. And I would craft a message based on the points of commonality that I identified in my research. Right. And that message follows a pretty specific template that I'm going to share with you. OK. This is actually a template that you can use for any LinkedIn message you send, right? A connection request, a recommendation request, an introduction request, or any sort of message. So you say, hi, Johnny. Now, in this case, I'm not reminding him how he knows me because he doesn't know me. So this is where I point, put our points of commonality. I say, I see you're from Boston. I grew up there. Newberry Street is crazy. Is it as crazy as it was when I was a teenager? Blah, blah, something to get his attention and make him feel like I'm relevant enough for him to engage with me. And then I say, I'm reaching out because I'm really intrigued by the your, your food-themed brand. And it's something that I have thought a lot about, how to combine marketing and food. Uh, and I was hoping to just pick your brain about it. Would you be willing to spend 10 minutes with me? And then I say thanks in advance. Sherry, be transparent about what you want and why you want it. Okay. So if I'm requesting to connect, so and and depending on who the person is, right? If it's someone less important than Johnny, I might have just said, I was hoping to connect with you and add you to my network. And that's fine. Right. Um, but uh but be straightforward about what you want and why you want it. Um and there's another thing I want to show you, which is if I click connect, right? Now for some people the follow button shows up for here on their profile. For some people, the connect button does. So if I click more and then connect, I get a question. Do you want to add a note or send without a note? Always add a note. It doesn't matter if you see the person every day. It doesn't matter if it's your grandmother that you're requesting to connect with. Always add a note. Because how else will they know why? you got to give people context, especially if you don't know them that well. Right? So you add a note. Use the, use the template or don't, but I recommend using the template, personalize it, and then click send. And this is a new thing. That's interesting. It looks like they're trying to beef up, beef up premium <laughs> by, um, by limiting the number of personalized invitations you can send per month. That's unfortunate that they're doing that. Um, but um, yeah. So you send the personalized invitation and hopefully Johnny sees it and says, sure, I'll connect with Sherry. I always, always, always respond better to someone who reaches out to, uh, like a cold outreach, right? Someone who requests to connect with me and I don't know them. I always respond better when it they include a personalized note, when I understand why they think it would be a good idea for us to connect. Because otherwise... I don't know how much effort they put into it. Did they even look at my profile or did I just show up in some random search they did and, and they're just clicking connect, 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 right? Um, so the note is really important in my opinion. All right. We've gotten through that. Um, let's pause now. So, so... That's how you kind of start to beef up your network, right? You connect with people you know, people you meet, and then you can use search 
to find other people who are relevant for you and find your way to connect with them, whether that's through direct introductions for mutual connections, which is the ideal, or highlighting points of commonality in your connection requests. All right, let's go, let's get Johnny's profile. He looks like quite a bro. Uh, let's get Johnny's profile off the screen and um, let's go to the chat and we'll take a break for Q&A. So, so during this Q&A time, you can pay attention to the Q&A and you can ask your own questions and or you can just start playing around on LinkedIn by yourself, putting, putting into practice some of the things that we've discussed by starting to do connection requests or prayer, prayer, play around with search, et cetera. We'll spend five to 10-ish minutes in Q&A, depending on how many questions there are. The questions do not need to be only focused on the things that we discussed uh, just now. It could be anything related to LinkedIn and using LinkedIn and using LinkedIn for career development and job search. Um, although I will prioritize the ones that are relevant for the level two material. Again, if you want to ask a question, you need to put it in the chat window because we're not going to be taking live questions. So I'm going to go through chat and make sure that I haven't missed any questions from folks. Um, um, so there was some question about LinkedIn training and LinkedIn learning. So LinkedIn learning is one is, is actually a separate service from LinkedIn premium. LinkedIn learning is like the courses that you can take through LinkedIn. And you can actually access the equivalent of that through your San Francisco Public Library login through the and Angela can um, provide the directions for that. And we talk a little more of that in level three. LinkedIn premium is, a, is an upgrade to the basic LinkedIn profile that has some features to it that, that could, could maybe be helpful to you in your job search and in your networking. What I will say about this, because it comes up in every workshop and it's a good question, it is not a silver bullet. It is not a replacement for good LinkedIn strategy and for putting in the work. Right. So you still have to do all the things that I talk about in this workshop in order to be successful on LinkedIn. But LinkedIn Premium can also provide some additional things to you that might be helpful depending on your situation. It just depends. If you're in a very, very busy industry, for example, it could be helpful for various reasons. Um, but um, it's also not cheap. I think it's like between 30 and 40 dollars a month. Um, so it's something you maybe want to try, see if you feel a difference. If not, you cancel, et cetera. But my recommendation to you would be first put in the time to build a great profile, build a strong network and get used to the networking of LinkedIn and in the engagement, which we'll talk about in a little bit before you pay money for the kind of added bells and whistles. All right. Um, Ah, Harold, great question. What if you're looking for a job um, and that's the reason you're reaching out to people? That is a very good and relevant question considering the topic of this workshop. So the template that the messaging template that I shared can still apply. And the what you would do is you would say, I'm reaching out because I'm looking for a new opportunity or I'm looking for a new job in blank industry. And I'm hoping that you could give me some guidance because you are such an expert, right? Flattery always gets you somewhere. And what you would want to do, we talk about this more in level three, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it now, but what you want to do when you're reaching out to someone you don't know very well about job opportunities, don't go right in for the referral or for the, the interview or whatever it is. You always want to ask for an informational interview. Say, would you mind spending 15 minutes with me just telling me about your company, telling me about the industry? I want to learn from you. The commitment is much less. And this is the reason people are on LinkedIn, to share and build expertise. And so um, that is what you're enabling them to do. 
by requesting the informational interview. And the goal of the informational interview is to get to the point where they're willing to introduce you to other people. And you work your way through that to the point where you're speaking to a hiring manager. We talk more about that next month. So I, I, if you're interested in more in that process, I encourage you to come next month. All right, let's keep going. Um, okay. 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 Let's keep going. Um, and I will, uh, address some of the other questions towards the end if we have time, because they're, they're not quite as relevant, um, to what we're talking about today. All right. So in the next section, um, we're going to talk about um, once you have people in your network, how do you how do you keep it strong, right? Because if you build your network up, whether you have fifty connections or five hundred connections or more than that, if you want them to show up for you, you need to stay engaged with them in some way. That doesn't mean that you're like you know chatting with them every day. That's not how LinkedIn works, right? And it's not Facebook. <laughs> um, but you have to be present. You have to add value. And LinkedIn, some of that's on you, but LinkedIn does make it easier in some ways, all right? And the, the most uh, easiest ways to do that are to um, just respond to the prompts that LinkedIn, LinkedIn gives you, right? Uh, and so let, let's just go back live to LinkedIn and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so the easy, so one of the easiest things to do, and like, let's say, you know, you're, you're trying to just like, you know, um, take care of your network. Uh, and so um, you, maybe you go on LinkedIn once a week. Now, if you're actively job searching, chances are realistically you're on LinkedIn a lot more than that. Um, but once a week is probably enough to maintain a, a pretty good quality network for you. So you maybe don't have to worry so much about engaging every single day. You can focus on the job searching most days, spend one day a week with your network. You just scroll down your newsfeed. Eli reposted Jen Trendler's post. Okay, well, if I was trying to get strong, more strongly connected with Eli or Jen Trendler, that'd be great or anything that they're talking about, right? You just see what's going on in your network and you just like it. You, you comment on it, you share it. Just those sort of one click interactions with people can make a big difference because you pop up on their radar. I see who likes my posts and believe me, I mean, unless they're like, a celebrity, right? <laughs> um, people are looking at who likes their posts. And so even if it's someone you've never interacted with before, once you do reach out to that person, right? Like if like Johnny Earl, the cupcake guy, um, if I start engaging with his content and then a few weeks later I reach out to him, well, he might recognize my name just from seeing it on the list of people who liked his posts. That in itself is a leg up, right? That's better. That's a better position than I was in before I liked all of his posts. Okay. So the, the, the homepage newsfeed is just a great way to get a snapshot, quickly page through, like I said, you know, just spend a little bit of time here once a week seeing what's going on and interacting. The other really great place for that is the notifications section. So up here on the top, notifications. This is a pl place where LinkedIn notifies you of things that it that LinkedIn, the robots, think are relevant for you, okay? So um, things people post, but also new positions people have gotten, work anniversaries, birthdays, um, and, and other things like that. Congratulating people on birthdays, work anniversaries, and new positions are a great way to stay engaged, but also to re-engage with someone, right? If I wanted to get reconnected with Aaron, this would be a great way to do it. Or if I wanted to get reconnected with um, Wayne Kim, who just had a work anniversary, it would be a great excuse to reach out and say, Wayne, congrats on the work anniversary. Can't believe you've been there for 
two years or however long he's been there. Hey, remember when we worked together at that company? Um, I hope things have been going well for you lately, right? That's like the remind them how they know you part of my template. And then if I have something specific I want from Wayne, I could say, I'm, re I'm actually reaching out because blah, 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 blah. Or I could let it go. I could let it marinate a little bit and then, you know, reach out if he responds. Great. And then I could I could reach out and see it, see if um, I could let it go a little a slower burn. Either way is fine. It depends on your style. No one is going to fault you for asking for what you need. Some people are just less gracious about being open to it. Um. So the notifications are a great place to get ways to engage with people and ways to be on people's radar. But like I said, this is this is part of the whole putting in the work, right? You need to rem remember to do this, you know, maybe once a week. All right, let's check in to make sure I'm not missing anything, right? Okay. So in the in the this next part is more about the proactive engagement with your network. Um, it also enables you to um, connect with new people that you've never met before in an authentic way that makes it easier for you to connect with them as opposed to like just doing a search and then reaching out to them cold, okay? And the key here is the golden rule of social media and networking, which is provide value. In, in the session one workshop, I talked about how I thought about LinkedIn. I think about LinkedIn as a gigantic worldwide cocktail party. And one of the reasons I think about that is I think I think of it that way is because at a cocktail party, as long as you have something interesting to say, you can walk up to anybody you want and start a conversation. Right. You don't have to get on anyone's calendar. Doesn't matter how low you are on the totem pole. You got something interesting to say. You can, you can inter interact with anybody. And LinkedIn is the same way. And so is if you're providing value, that opens up opportunities for you to connect with people that you never would have been able to otherwise, and you probably never would have even known they existed otherwise. And there's a, a number of ways that you can provide value to open these doors. The biggest one, one of the most underutilized ones, or at least underutilized in a, in a good way, in my opinion, are groups. Um, we already talked about the homepage newsfeed um, and uh, I'll talk about content and target profiles in a moment, but let's go to groups. I wanna show you groups. So groups are a little hard to find on LinkedIn right now. Um, they used to be a little more front and center. You can you can go to groups either on the left hand side of the home page. There's like a list of there's like a roundup of recent here, and so if you already belong to groups, you can get to groups that way. But if you've never really messed with groups before, you actually have to go to the for business drop down here on the top right, and then go to the group square. It's a little weird because I don't think groups are for businesses. I mean, in some ways they are, but they're super beneficial for individuals as well. Groups are basically discussion forums of people who all share the same interest. So what does that mean in the context of everything we've been talking about? A group, a LinkedIn group, is just a collection of people who are all professionally relevant for you, right? You search for a group based on your professional goals. And the groups you find are all going to theoretically be good people to add to your network. Okay. So let me show you a group. Um, all right. Let's see what this one looks like. So you can see it looks very similar to the homepage. It's just that all of the pieces of content and the discussions are happening only with the members of the group. Okay. And let's say I was... Um, really interested in connecting with Serena. Um, and so I, you know, or, or she just seemed interesting. Um, here we go. Priya. I am actually really interested in business analytics and healthcare. 
So I like this. And then I actually comment on it to ask a question about the event and Priya responds back. And we get into an exchange just in the comments of this, of this one post. Um, and, and so we're interacting with each other in the context of this group. Well, that's a really great time for me to then reach out to Priya and request to connect. She knows who I am. We've already been interacting. I reach out to her. I say, Priya, it's been so great talking with you in the women in business group. I would love to add you to my network. She's going to say yes. We're like, we're all already clearly relevant for each other. But if I, I can provide a little more context too, I am fascinated by business analytics and healthcare. It's a part of how I'm trying to do this and this and this with my work. And I would love to add you to my network. I would love to connect with you. She's going to say yes. So it just gives you that really strong relevancy and point of commonality. And it helps you discover even more people who are relevant to you. Be in groups. Even if all you're doing is interacting with what other people post. However, let's talk about content. Posting content on LinkedIn, whether it's in groups or just LinkedIn proper, is a whole other kettle of fish. It adds more time and more effort for you. It's something we focus on more in level three. But what I will say is that if you provide value via posting content, you're even more noticeable and it makes it even clearer to people that you're relevant to them, right? So let's say I reach out to Priya and I request to connect and she goes to my profile and she sees that I've posted a bunch of stuff recently about business analytics and health, well, then she's like, oh, well, Shari's clearly relevant for me. So it's just, it's again, it's all part of that holistic view of what is my goal? Everything I do on LinkedIn has to be in service to that goal, right? That's groups. All right. Um, Target profiles. This is another thing that I think can be really helpful because LinkedIn is overwhelming. And so the search results are overwhelming. All the people in your groups are overwhelming. It's just crazy. And there's so much to do. And how do you keep it all straight? And how do you make sure you're checking all your boxes? So what I recommend people do is, again, with your, with your strong professional goal in mind, what you're trying to accomplish, when you find someone that you feel is particularly relevant for you, like, let's say I was like, oh, Priya, Priya is like my golden goose right now. I would love to connect with Priya. Priya goes on my VIP target profile list, right? I'm not ready to connect with her yet. I don't think our connection is strong enough yet. Or Johnny Earl, Johnny Earl, like he's just too, he's too outside my, my, you know, kind of sphere right now, but I need to get to him somehow, right? He goes on my target profile list. I have, you know, maybe five, maybe 10 people on my target profile list. I follow them if I can follow them. They're the people I'm paying attention to. I'm interacting with their content. It just gives me a little bit narrower of a focus to make sure that I am making progress while staying sane. Um, so I encourage you to keep a list like that. It just helps you kind of narrow down uh, your efforts a little bit when it comes to building a strong network. Uh, okay. Um, I think that's it. Okay. So um, that's the main presentation. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the official wrap up and then we have like 20 minutes for Q&A and I will stay the whole time. People can ask questions, ask me to go over parts that I went through too fast, ask me to, you can ask me to clarify, to show you things again, all right? It'll be your time. Um, and uh, if you want to leave, please feel free to leave. Um, as Angela said, um, we'll send out the recording and the uh, slide uh, deck afterwards, along with an evaluation form that I urge you to fill out so that I can know how to make this better in the future. Um, but yeah, uh, so let me do the wrap up and then we'll just spend the rest of the time on Q&A and I'll try and get to as many of your questions about all everything and all this stuff as possible. So for the wrap up. Remember, you got to put in some time to build a strong network. You got to you got to really think about what your goals are and make sure that you are um 
focused on that with what you are trying to do and who you're reaching out to, who you're adding to your network. Um, Another really important note for using LinkedIn overall is be real, be yourself, because that's who's going to get hired, right? And um, and that's hopefully who you will be most excited about too, right? So don't pretend to be someone else or be like someone else. Um, we'll talk more about brand and persona next month, but um, it should still be you. Have fun with it. This, especially this part where you're meeting new people and adding them to your network. It's so, it can be so exciting. Um, so many interesting people out there doing amazing things. So hopefully you'll see it as that sort of adventure and not as just another thing you have to do on the road to your professional goals and to, you know, getting that job or whatever it is. Um, but you know, put in the work, build up a high quality network, and then um, hopefully they will be there for you. Speaking of which, attend level three next month um, if you aren't planning to already so that you can learn how to leverage that network uh, to help you gain more opportunities. And with that, um, I'll go back to LinkedIn and we can take some uh, questions. So please keep them coming. I'm going to try and go back to the ones that I skipped before and then go down from there. So, um, okay. Um, there's a question about work authorization. Um, I'll be I'll be perfectly honest. I don't know a ton about how employers handle this. Um, I do know there's so so I don't know if it's something that they look at in the early stages of you like it's something you would have to make sure you check off in an application process anyway that you are authorized to work in the U.S. So I'm not sure it's necessary to put it on a LinkedIn profile. You know, if you're li if you show that you're living in the U.S. and that you're looking for work in the U.S., I don't think you have to explicitly say that you have your work authorization. But if you if you feel based on your experiences to date that it would help you gain more opportunities, then certainly try it out. Put it in your summary, I'd say, in the summary section, in the about section. Um, you can say, I've obtained my work authorization and I'm excited to, you know, find a job doing what I was doing, um, which which is, um, I think, Mariella, your budget specialist, right, which is sounds impressive and complicated. So, um, yeah, I would say kind of gauge based on your background, but I don't think there's any need to put it on there. It'll come up as part of the interview process anyway. Uh, okay. Let's see, I wanna make sure. Okay, so um, Alan asked how to contact a LinkedIn job poster to learn the status of a job application and situations where that is even advisable. So we'll talk more about this in, in next month, Alan, um, in terms of the process of applying for jobs, et cetera. Um, generally, it's not advisable. People get, for, depending on the job in the industry, um, the LinkedIn posters are getting dozens of applications a day sometimes, um, and uh, each company and team has their own process for how they sort of go through and organize um, all of those applications. Generally, if you don't hear from a company, it's because they don't want to interview you. However, if you have some, like, it isn't always possible to contact a LinkedIn job poster. Sometimes on a job listing, there will be uh, some sort of indication of the hiring manager, um, like meet the hiring team right here, right? Um, you could theoretically message Hayes if you were worried. It's, it's as long as you're Polite, I think it's fine to say, I, I just wanted to make sure that it was received, et cetera. Likely, Hayes is going to be like, it was received. There's been a lot. We'll contact you if we want to interview you, right? You're not going to get any more information than that. It's unlikely to help you to get in touch with Hayes in that context. It might hurt you, eh, depending on, on how Hayes is feeling that day. What will help you is doing networking before you apply. 
so that it, you're not just one in a sea of dozens or hundreds of applications. And we'll talk about that next month. I hope that was like at least a decent answer to your question. All right. So Mariella, I, I know it wasn't really a question, but your comment about making your profile more attractive, given that you don't have any work experience in the US, it's just, it's very compelling. And I wanted to, 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 to address it real quick, which is, um, you know, you, you put together a, a strong profile of your background in Peru and tell your story, right? What is it that you have to offer? What is your background, et cetera? And um, I personally think that that is the most important piece and that employers will see how qualified you are. Um, and so um, I, 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 like, I wouldn't be turned off by someone who had never worked in the United States before if they were in all other ways super qualified for the position. But you might have had different experiences already. So, all right. Now we're going to some of the newer ones. Does the open to work badge on your profile actually add any value, or does it come off as tacky slash desperate? Ever? That's a great question. No one's ever asked that. Believe it or not. Um, the open to work badge. Um, I don't, I've never considered it tacky or desperate. Um, the reason we're all on LinkedIn is to network and everybody knows that probably the majority of people on LinkedIn are looking for jobs. So I don't, I don't think it's tacky or desperate. Um, it could be beneficial. Um, you know, let me just remind everyone what, what we're talking about. So on your profile, this open to, if you go to your profile, you'll see the open to button and you say finding a new job. And then there's different levels or settings if you scroll down, right? So visibility is, I, I, who do I want to see that I'm looking for a new job? Just recruiters, the people who pay and use LinkedIn recruiter or everyone. So here's the thing, LinkedIn recruiter is expensive. And so not all hiring managers are going to have access to it. And so if you want everybody to see that you're open because you're doing heavy networking and you're rubbing elbows with people who might be able to get you hired, you might want to use this because at a glance they can see that, oh, hey, like Sherry is so relevant for what I'm looking for and she's open to work. I'm going to see if I can grab her, right? So that's the scenario where it might actually help you. LinkedIn Recruiter is a paid software from LinkedIn that not everybody can afford. So you you would be not visibly open to work to everybody. Hope that makes sense. All right. Professional goals. Thank you, Tara. I've been using that phrase a lot. Um, what are professional goals? For many of us, it's going to be a new job, right? But that's not specific enough. What type of job? What level? What are some examples of the titles you're looking for? Um, what type of company? All of these are going to then help you hone in on what sort of profile do I need to build? What sort of people do I need to be adding to my network? What sort of content and value and engagement do I need to be building within that network? Right? So yes, new job, but Let's dig in a little deeper there. Learn stuff. Well, obviously, that's also not specific enough. So be specific in your goals because that's the kind of thing that's going to guide you in terms of your behavior on LinkedIn and your strategy. Uh, all right. I read that people are now adding a link to their LinkedIn page on their resume. Do you see this a lot? Yes, I've been doing this for 10 years <laughs> myself. I highly recommend it. Not just on your resume. Um, add a link to your LinkedIn profile in your email signature, on your Facebook profile. Um, I don't, what is Snap? I don't know what, what you're on. Snapchat, Twitter, blog page, whatever it is that you do. Um, 
put your LinkedIn profile on your, your LinkedIn profile is meant to be and should be the most impressive demonstration of your professional qualifications. You want everyone seeing it as many people as possible, right? Uh, how to ask for a job or job leads without sounding pushy. We'll talk more about this next month, but um, first of all, I'd like to reclaim the word pushy. <laughs> uh, there's nothing wrong with being clear about what you're looking for and, and, and asking for what you need. Uh, I think you should be polite, um, but be transparent. And if someone, you know, if one of my connections works at a company that I'm really interested in working at, there is absolutely nothing wrong with saying, I see, I see there's an open role on this team at your company. I am so interested in that position. Would you mind 10 minutes? I would really appreciate it. Right. Or, or et cetera. Right. You don't come right out and say, can you refer me in? You start with that informational interview and that's how you kind of soften it a little bit. And adding flattery always helps. Everett's next question is about the recommendation section. It, does it add more value or is it gimmicky? If we ha already have a handful of recommendations, should we invest more time in building it out? You should have a few, at least a few recommendations that are from the past two to three years if you are looking for a new job. Um, recommendations are far and away more valuable than the endorsements. The endorsements are vanity. The recommendations are people in their own words talking about how great you are and why you're great. So you should absolutely get recommendations. We talk in depth about recommendations in level one. So you can watch the video on that or um, come back in April. Um, but yes, recommendations are very valuable. I always look at recommendations for people I'm checking out. Um, I don't, Harold, I'm not sure what you mean by a footer on LinkedIn. I i don't recall. Did I say footer? Uh, if you can post again to clarify, that would be helpful. Oh, Tara has some good insight about the badge. She says, I don't like using the badge. The reason being that everyone is open to work given the right circumstances. Also, it seems sad when it's still on eight months later. Yeah, that can that can be um, discouraging for sure. It's a tough it's a tough market out there right now. Try the other thing too is none of this is forever. You can try out the open to work badge, see how it feels, see if you feel like it makes a difference for you, and then take it off and put it back on again. Whatever you want. Jenny, super good question. If we're looking for work, should we add a summary about it at the top of our profile? So, of course, there's this always present disclaimer. It depends on your situation, right? Like if you're looking for a new job, but you still have a job, you got to make sure that you're considering that. But in general, yes, you put it, you put it, let, let, I just happen to be on my profile. You put it everywhere you can. So if I were looking for a new job, let's say, unfortunately, I was no longer able to work at my current role and I wasn't there and I was looking for something new. I would put experienced nonprofit leader, blah, 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 keyword, 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 looking for a new role. Looking for new opportunities in nonprofit program management, blah, 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 blah. That should be your headline. Okay. Put it right there because that's what shows up in search results. So don't just say that you're looking for a new job. Say what type of job you're looking for and what your qualifications are. It all has to be in like one sentence. So you can do some wordsmithing, but yes, it should be in your headline. And then it should be in more detail in your about section. I'm an experienced blah, 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 blah. And I'm looking for this type of job, blah, 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 so that I can blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to contribute blah, 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 blah. And my background is this and this and blah, blah, blah. This is where you tell your story in the about section. All right. Um, Tara asks, what if you have more than one goal, like a job, but also academic or scholarly interests? If they're not relevant enough to each other, I urge you to choose one that you want to use LinkedIn for. 
um, it, it's, you can join groups related to your academic or scholarly interests without it hurting, you know, your, your network too at all. But if you start trying to like, pr like say on your profile that you are both a, you know, customer service representative and a, um, you know, like genetic researcher, like it, you know, so. Uh, yes. So um, Tara's um, advice about turning off a setting that blasts updates to your network while you are still building your profile. Yeah, this is something we go over in level one as well, but I'll show it to you all now. It used to be like a huge problem for a lot of people. And now I think more and more people are, are discovering the settings. But this page, if I, if I click on me, and then I click on settings and privacy. It takes me to a whole crazy section of LinkedIn where I can configure all sorts of things about my account. We're not going to go through it all. Um, I urge you to um, explore it at your own pace and in, on your own time. But um, visibility, I think, is where it is now. Yeah. Okay, so down here under visibility of your LinkedIn activity, share profile updates with your network. So in general, you want all of this on. Like I said, you want as many people seeing as much impressive stuff about you as possible. There's no reason to hide it unless you're doing something under the radar with your current job, then that's a whole separate complex situation. But in general, keep the updates on unless like, you're going to be making, you know, a ton of tiny little changes a lot and you feel like it's just too much for people to see that I'm like adding one skill at a time, once a day, all this stuff. And you want to just say, okay, for this week, I'm turning off profile updates. I'm going to build up a super nice profile and then I'm going to turn it back on and make like one final update that just blasts my profile to everyone. What I will say is this, the algorithms have changed a lot over the past several years. The, the like, robot, you know, well, for those who don't know what algorithms are, it's just the, the code that basically decides what you see on LinkedIn and what others see. They've changed a lot. So just because you're making a ton of profile updates doesn't mean that everyone in your network is going to get, get notified about that update every single time you make it. In fact, LinkedIn almost certainly has safeguards to prevent that from happening. So, um, I wouldn't worry too much about this, but if you are worried about it, this is how you turn it off. Any other questions? It takes effect immediately, Alan, this on off. All, the, all of these settings take effect immediately. Good question. All right. Um, well, as I said, connect with me on LinkedIn. And um, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. I hope to see many of you ne at next month's session. And I wish you all the absolute best of luck with whatever you decide your goals are. And, um, and I hope you also have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Sherry, for sharing your knowledge on how to build, grow, and ways to reconnect with our networks. I I'd like to thank everyone else for joining. I hope you found this presentation informative and helpful to you. I'll be sending out a survey along with a link to the recording and the slide deck. Uh, if you guys could fill out the survey, that would be great. Any feedback can help us improve in our programming. Uh, I'll see you guys all next month, hopefully, and good luck, everyone, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye, everyone.